Yeah, there'll be um, a significant number of changes given um, we've got a lot of players out through their injury or suspension. So uh, Daniel Wells and Lockie Hanson going early for surgery and obviously we've got the suspensions of Zeeble and, and Greenwood. So uh, there'll be minimum four changes, but probably more. Do you give Mad Jack Dora a look? Get, get some game time into him? No, well, Hamish McIntosh is coming back into the side, so uh, Mad Jack's development's been absolutely outstanding this year, and you know, he'll continue into a, a final series for Werribee, and um, you know, we've been really pleased with him, but you know, our, our priority is absolutely to win this game, and um, we think that Hamish McIntosh and Todd Goldstein will more than cover us uh, in the ruck, so you know, we've got Drew Petrie as well, so we're not going to go in with four ruckmen. Oh, he'll definitely spend time forward. I think that you know, playing two genuine ruckmen who only play in the ruck is, is almost impossible to do. So, so he'll definitely spend time forward and, and um, so will Drew and so will, will Goldstein. So you know, we've, we've given a lot of thought as to how it's going to work and you know, we're, we're really looking forward to putting it to the test this weekend. He made his uh, intentions very much clear recently um, saying he you know, wants to be a one club player. And yeah. All that sort of stuff. Is that... Is that the way you see it tracking? Yeah, of course. We wouldn't have contracted him for three years and if we didn't see it going that way. So, you know, we, we've we're absolutely committed to Hamish. I've said regularly that people can speculate and people only, you know, they barely scratch the surface. They look at your very best side and, and ask the question, can they all work together? But, you know, they don't, they don't dig as deeply as, as our list managers do. And the fact that we need four Ruckman on our list and, um, you know, will they play definitely in our best 22 every week for the next five years well who knows but one thing I do know is we need four ruckmen on our list so um, you know, in terms of our list management strategy that's why we contracted him for three years. You've been pretty clear on your intentions. Hamish has said what he wants to do. Do you get frustrated if you keep getting the speculation and keep getting asked about it? Oh no I understand that the speculation and and look I, I expect that the clubs are interested in your good players, and Hamish is certainly one of those. But you know, all, all the we're absolutely committed to Hamish. Hamish is committed to us, and the only way that would ever change is if if Hamish or his management came to us and said he wanted to move on. So, you know, as a club, we're we're totally committed to him. Obviously, well, it was a pretty difficult weekend last weekend. What's the week been like this week? And I guess if you managed to put aside much of this disappointment, you must be feeling after what happened Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, look, look we've we've. Thoroughly review the game, and, and we know that there are still areas that are that are really letting us down, and areas that we need to improve in. So, you know, we, we there are also parts of the game where we knew that things we were doing were good enough, we were able to, to get out to a good lead, but but certainly not able to sustain it against you know really matched, battled, hardened footy side, and St Kilda are playing some terrific football at the moment. So, you know, while we were disappointing, I think you know, I don't think St Kilda have got their due credit for as well as they played on the weekend. So, you know, we'll, 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 the excitement around the place is, is, is still up because, you know, we're, another player's going to make his debut for the footy club and Aaron Black will come in and, and start in our forward line and we're really excited about Aaron. And he's had a couple of years with, with injury but he's a, he's a really unique player, really athletic, uh, key forward for us that we think is going to be a really important part of our future. So. Um, we're very keen to have a, have a look at him at the at the highest level, and you know, we think he'll help us win the game on the weekend. What's the same important game for Brady Williams? Yeah, it's a massive game, and you know the 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 players. You know, I, we've got our superstars, and you know Brent Harvey and these types of players are, are revered around the place. But but Brady is is revered because he's um, largely reflects how we want to be seen as a footy club. You know, extremely capable, but, but extremely humble at the same time. So uh, the players will, will be desperate to get the right result for Brady on the weekend. How much of a test do you see this Richmond side that have been in some pretty good form of late? Yeah, well, I think that the, the very simple way to look at Richmond's form is that they, they beat Sydney quite comfortably and, and look what Sydney have done over the last two weeks. So, you know, they're, they're obviously in fantastic form. And they've got some, some terrific young players and they're really well led, really well coached. So, you know, we'll, the Eureka game's a game we look forward to and, you know, we've got the trophy at the moment. We're going to be hell bent on keeping it. Might be a little too early to look at the year as a whole, but, I mean, how far do you think you've come as a, as a team this year? Well, 
no one near as far as I was, as I was um, planning for and, and working towards. But um, look, we're, we're really, really confident that we've improved in, in a lot of areas. We're, we're now um, you know, purely look at inside 50 numbers and, and contested possession numbers. We're right up there with the best in the competition. You know, we, we're, we're certainly lacking um, polish. There's no doubt about that. So that's something that will be a key focus of our pre-season. And, um, you know, you look back on seasons and, and, you know, with disappointment when you're not playing in the finals, but um, yeah, we'll analyse it really closely and it'll direct and drive our pre-season. So we can add that polish. We're confident that um, 2012 is going to be a really exciting one for us. Is there anything personnel-wise that you might have in your head that you might need to add during the training week or before the draft specifically? Oh, look, you're always looking to improve your list and, and where we're, we sit ninth on the ladder at the moment and, and it's clearly not good enough. So, you know, we'll be looking at anything we can to, to improve our list. I mean, we're not in a situation where we're just going to sit idle and, and hope we improve. You know, we're going to be really aggressive, you know, really ruthless to ensure that we improve from 2012 and beyond. Now, what opportuni opportunities present themselves, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, we're certainly not going to be sitting idle during that period. Oh, we, we always encourage the players to get along and, and look at the best teams play. Um, you know, and the, and the finals, you know, series you, you, reputations are made, and and you know we'll see who the who the true competitors and the really great sa sides are over the next four or five weeks. So, you know, we, we'll take that opportunity to get along and have a look. And um, you know, we're only we're only seven or eight weeks away from another Utah campaign. So it's you know it's going to come around very quickly. Just uh, on a slightly different matter, the paper skin is kind of rumbling on a bit. I just kind of wondered like, what you think of it, be, what it kind of means for your club. Because at the end of the day, you guys are still waiting to find out what you're going to get going down as well. Yeah, I, I think that that what sometimes gets lost in in all these disputes is that players should be really, really well rewarded for what they do. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the game and. You know, I think our, our best players should be paid more than coaches. They should be paid more than anyone else involved in football because they are the superstars of the game. So, and I think the AFL have been really clear on that from the start, that the players are the most important stakeholder and that they would deal with them first and then everyone else after that. For clubs, it's starting to get a little bit difficult to plan for next year, that's for sure. So I think it's in everyone's best interest just to sit down, get this done as, as quickly as possible. And, yeah, there's no better environment for a young player to be coming into an, into an AFL career right now. I mean, the opportunities before them are absolutely enormous, both financially and, and in terms of developing them as people as well. And the opportunities to, to get a career while you're still playing footy. I mean, any young, talented athlete would have to choose AFL as their um, sport of choice, purely because of, of the rewards and the opportunities that it affords them. So. I think that the code's in a fantastic position, but for the clubs, we need to get this sorted as quickly as possible. And I think the AFL PA and the AFL are, are, are going to get that done very quickly, and the clubs need them to. When, when you're talking about planning, is there any specific example you can give us about where it, I guess, may be holding you back, not knowing what sort of money you're going to have next year? Well, well the, they're endless. I mean, we don't know what the salary cap is. We don't know um, what our football department budget's going to be. We can't recontract our staff. Um, we can't do any of that until we know, um, you know what, the, what the total pool of, of money's going to be. So, you know, I think that's, that's really important. Okay.